Good morning, good morning, good morning, uh, or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you guys are in the world. In fact, where are you in the world? Um, I am excited about uh, our special guest today. As every week, every week, last week uh, was 4th of July, so we didn't have a show last week. Um, so missed you guys. Hopefully you had a great 4th uh, if you're uh, in the U.S. and celebrated. Um, today we're going to be talking about something that a lot of you guys probably don't think super sexy. I'm just going to say it right out front because a lot of people, when it comes to their numbers, one, they don't know them, or two, they don't know what they mean, even if they do know them. Uh, and in some cases, it's just easier just to not pay attention to them. Mm not smart, just going to say. So we're going to talk about numbers today. Analytics, um, like I say, you may think that's not sexy, but there is an easier way to do it. And our special guest today is going to share um, with those things with us. So I'm excited to have this conversation because I feel like there's so many things I don't know when it comes to numbers, because I'm just going to be totally upfront, totally upfront. You give me a, a spreadsheet with numbers on it and yeah, my eyes cross and I'm like, let me see what else I got to do. And I go do the other things, right? So some of you probably feel the same way. So if that's you, you are in the right place. Um, let's see who, where, where's everybody coming in from? I'm just getting comments. Good morning, Paul. So, so exciting to see you here as usual. I can always count on you being here. I really appreciate it. Every week um, you're usually with us and I really, really appreciate you. Hope, hope you're doing well. Um, okay, so a couple of little things um, on all the shows that we have, we do giveaways. And today is no different. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning a little bit because I had to move my, I had to use a different mic this morning. So I'm having trouble seeing all the pieces and parts. Uh, let's see. Okay, so today's giveaways are, um, we're going to give away two uh, of my course, it's called PDF to profit, profit, create and sell your first mini digital product in seven days or less. So if you don't have a digital product or you would like to create your next one, um, and you're not quite sure how to do it, then this is going to be super value based to you. So we're going to be pick two winners, um, for that course. Um, how do you win? We have a, several ways that we uh, pick our winners. We have what we call the wheel of well, and we enter all of you guys into whoever participates and wants to win uh, into the wheel of well. So here's three core ways that you can win. Share your aha moments down in the comment area. I know I said the C word. Uh-oh. Um, Facebook doesn't like that for some reason. But anyway, share those aha moments. Like an aha moment is, wow, I didn't know that. Or two, I knew that, but I needed to hear it again. Uh, and use the hashtag aha, okay? So that we can see it, quickly grab it, and, and enter you into the will of wow. And then tag someone if you know that they need this. Like if you know somebody that's trying to figure out Google Analytics, for example, because we're going to be talking about that today. Or what's this new thing called GA4? I think that stands for Google Analytics 4, by the way. It's new. Like what is it? Like if you know somebody who needs to know this, tag them, sprinkle it out into the world. Let's, let's get people in the know, okay? And then the third way is ask questions. We love them and we'll try to get um, to as many of them as we possibly can. If you don't want to worry about taking notes, uh, you'd like to, to have the follow up later, check out what this was all about, just drop in notes in the down under and we will make sure that you get those. Now, let me just do a quick clarification on that. Um, that's for Facebook. Like, so if you're over on LinkedIn or if you're on YouTube or if you're on Twitter, but we're going to drop a link in, follow that. It'll take you back to Facebook. Sorry about that. But that's the only mechanism we have for delivering the goodies, the, the show notes, um, because it's done through messenger on Facebook. So just giving you a heads up that that's, um, what's going to, how that's going to work. Um, okay. So let me see, give a quick shout out to everybody. Good morning, Janelle. How are you? Uh, well, we got Martin in the house from the UK. Hey, Martin. Um, our special guest is getting ready to speak in the UK. We were just talking about that pre-show. So um, 
Let's see who else. Gina is like, I've been thinking about this for a long time. Good. You are in the right place. Excellent. I'm so excited that somebody's like, I know I need to know this. Um, all right. Let me see. I think that is. And we got a few note requests. Excellent. So we'll make sure we get those out to you. Okay. So all the housekeeping stuff kind of done. Let's talk and bring on our special guest because that's why we're all here, right? Let me tell you a little bit about Brie. Brie is an analytical nerd, totally opposite from me. I just, I fessed up already, right? <laughs> she has a soft spot for strategy. She spent the last 10 years helping businesses of all sizes execute data-driven strategies to increase ROI. Um, today, she runs Beast Analytics. What a awesome name, right? It just makes it, so, it so goes with the context of the numbers, right? <laughs> a digital marketing analytics consultancy and contributes to leading industry publications such as Moz and Search Engine Journal. Y'all put your hands together for Brie. Hey, Brie. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Good. I need some clapping music, um, yeah, you know, you. on the front side here. Um, welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. Uh, I see you. We got Jim saying uh, good morning from Chattanooga. We've got Central Allison from Central Oregon in the house. Good morning, everybody. And then Paul says, welcome. Uh, Jim says, welcome. Excellent. I'm so excited that you guys are here and more specifically that you get to participate and learn from Brie because she is she's a genius, y'all. I'm just telling you and you're going to find out if you if you listen in. So Brie. How, I, now I'm not going to ask that question. I was getting ready to ask that question. I won't go there. Um, so um, how long have you been in the analytics space and why did you start there? I mean, uh, did you have a, a previous like business and it morphed into this or just kind of share the backstory of how you got to where you are today? Yeah. So I started um, in digital marketing when I was like, literally like 14 um i used to go to a bunch of punk shows my friends were in bands and at that time my space had just died i was in high school and took an adobe class um and learned how to make like just the most basic websites so because my space died that's how we were figuring out what merch they were going to have at shows when they were going to be playing all that kind of fun stuff we i i decided okay well i can make really basic websites and it'll have your schedule and pictures of your merch there so people know what to bring um i found out really quickly i was not good at making websites they were not cute at all whatsoever so um i went to the other side facebook rolled out pages around that time and um there were it was really easy to grow pages it was really easy to get a lot of interaction and, and things of that nature so i worked with some bands on like building their community on Facebook, as well as worked with some promotional uh, Facebook pages that just really helped local bands. And then I ended up working for a music startup that didn't get the funding. So they shut down. By this point, I was in college and I needed to make some money, you know, um, before the startup ran out of money. They asked if I would quit my job and move to Nashville and work for them, or not quit my job, quit college, move out to Nashville and work with them full time. And I said, my parents would kill me. So I absolutely am not going to do that. Um, but that's when I realized like, oh, this social media stuff is really going to start making people a lot of money. At that time, people were still saying that social media was a fad. Businesses weren't using social media. They didn't quite understand it. Um, so I ended up, at, at that time I was playing soccer for the college I was at I ended up quitting soccer and transferring school so that I could get a degree in social media marketing it was one of like I don't know probably a handful of schools that was offering it at the time um so I went to that school and just did a bunch of internships I did social for a little bit social turned into paid social turned into paid google ads turned into seo um, but the one thing that always linked it all together was the fact that they all had numbers, right? And I was always referring back to the numbers to see like, what was working, what didn't work, um, you know, and, and 
how how can we use these numbers to do things better? And as you know, I mean, analytics have just gotten better over the years. Uh, but yeah, so the, the first time I really was like, I love analytics or I really need to, to focus on this was um, I was I, I had an internship. I was like 19 and um, we had like a nonprofit come in and they were like, okay, we can spend a thousand dollars on a Google ads campaign. And I was like a thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. And I'm going to be in charge of this. What? (laughs) Like I need to know where every cent goes. And so I ended up learning about Google analytics and tracked everything I needed to know where every dollar went and was able to attribute $3,000 worth of donations to their organization to the thousand dollars of Google ads that we ran. Um, and that's kind of when, like, I, I never turned back after that. I, I went all in on analytics, um, and, and really using like data driven strategies. Um, you know, from there, I I graduated college, worked at an agency for a little bit, um, left the agency to go start a digital marketing program at our local tech school that offered hands-on digital marketing um, education. Did that for a couple of years, COVID hit. And then I was like, well, if I'm going to start my own business, you know, now it sounds wild, but now is the time. Um, so I started my own business. At first I was kind of just doing a little bit of everything, but at the beginning of this year, I decided all right, we're going to focus 100% on analytics and helping people use their numbers. And that's what I'm doing today um, is really, really focused on helping people. Yeah, yeah. Helping people collect, understand and use their data. That's that's what we focus on now. So that was kind of one of the questions I was getting ready to ask, because I think there's so much misinformation around the term analytics. And what is it? I mean, if you had to like, like define it, what is the simplest way to say, okay, this is what analytics is? Yeah. So analytics are just, um, you know, metrics and dimensions. So it's like the qualitative and quantitative data, right? About how people interact with the website or interact with a certain section of a website. So like face. Facebook analytics, you're getting information specifically on how people interact with your Facebook page, right? Um, And then like Google analytics is specific information about how people interact with your website. Um, Yeah. And and then most of the time, hopefully they make those numbers presentable and pretty uh, so that you actually understand them. Yeah. I think that's the thing is like, where do you track your number? I mean, so again, so the average business owner, I think, doesn't know all the things and they right. certainly don't know. I loved your story, something that you talked about where I was responsible for this thousand dollars. Like most of us, if we're marketing our business and I'm just going to speak on a generic, I'm not saying that painting everybody with this brush, but I see a lot of entrepreneurs who will say, okay, I'm going to spend $500. I'm going to spend a thousand or even 5,000 or whatever the number is, but they can't, they don't know what, what touch points generated revenue and could be attributed to that, that particular spend. So like if you're using Facebook ads, for example, and you spent, you know, $50, do you know if you've made $300 from a $50 spend or not? Right. Most of it, most people don't track that to the degree. And, and you said something else that I think is is powerful is that analytics have gotten better and easier for us yeah. to figure out and use. So um before we, I, I'm going to ask you about the G4 thing in, in just a minute or the G, GA4 thing, but um, what, why are numbers, you've alluded to it, but I really want to hammer this home. Like, why are the numbers important to us as business owners? Yeah. So there used to be a saying in marketing. So the first agency I worked at was a traditional marketing agency. They were just starting digital. Um and there used to be this saying where, you know, 50% of my marketing works. I just don't know which 50% it is. Like, <laughs> I, I just don't know which part it is. And that was the case for a long time because, you know, you run TV ads and newspaper ads and radio ads. 
and there really was just no way to track like okay is that why people came into my store i mean we saw an influx afterwards so uh correlation causation maybe i i don't really know um but with analytics today we are able to track you know how people are interacting with the internet and with the things that we put out on the internet. Um, If you watched the movie, The Social Dilemma, which is all about, you know, kind of this like Cambridge Analytica and the the different scares that Facebook has had um, in that movie, they say that, uh, or in that documentary, they say that uh, social and well, not social analytics, but um, digital marketing data is more profitable than oil. It's more valuable than oil at this point. Um, and oil is a, a very expensive product, right? Uh, in the world and digital analytics is actually more valuable than that. And it's because it can help so many business decisions. It can help people influence, you know, an audience. Um, and so the big thing about digital marketing analytics and, and you kind of hit on it too, was that a lot of numbers were given, right, away, right? Like you make a Facebook page, you get Facebook analytics, you run a Facebook ad, you get Facebook ad analytics, you set up your website, you can set up Google analytics and it just starts collecting some events for you. But there's one thing that people tend to overlook completely and it almost defeats the purpose of having analytics at all. And that's setting up your conversions or your events that you want people to complete. It's kind of like starting a race without having a finish line because you can run all day. and You're still running and you might be quote in first, but if there's not a finish line, you're never going to win. Right. Because there's no ending to it. You're just going to keep running yourself ragged. And in digital marketing, it's the same thing. Well, we can spend 50 bucks on Facebook, but if we didn't have our conversion set up, then we don't really know if it made us any money. We can guess that it may have helped if our numbers went up, but we don't really know. Right. And, and like you said, there are many touch points and stuff. So it's like, well, even if our numbers did go up, is it because they bought directly from the Facebook ad or is it because they saw the Facebook ad, then went to our website and then Googled us and came back to our website and converted, right? Um, but but I would say that the biggest thing is like you have to start with the end in mind. You have to have your core goal figured out. For most people, it's going to be like, I want people to buy this product or I want um, form fills so that I have leads. And that's a really good place to start. Like those are the things that you need to figure out how to track first and then work backwards from there. Like, okay, if I need to know if people are filling out this form, obviously we need to track the form fills, but let's work it backwards a little bit. Did people start the form? Did people scroll and actually see this form? Did they go to the page with the form on it? And then, you know, how did they get to that page? So on and so forth. Um, and if you if you have that conversion data, you're able to make a lot better decisions. I think that you said something super powerful and that you you have to set a goal. Otherwise, how do you know if you've arrived? Right. And then and then more. And then you're saying and I love this, that you need to track whether or not you've arrived, essentially, you know, and so often I think that most people are like, oh, my gosh, well, I don't know how to do that. Like she just said, that makes total sense in my head. But like, I don't I don't know how to do those things. And so they get hung up on the tech side again, um, which leads me to kind of like Google Analytics as is free, right? So you can connect it, but just exactly what you said, if you don't have your conversion set up, you're still in the same same boat. And there's this whole new thing called GA4. How new is this and what is it, I guess, is would be my question. Yeah, so GA4 rolled out in October of 2020. Um, and for like the first year, people just really fought it and said, you know, I'm not going to use it. Um, and and they just didn't, you know. But they came out last year and said, July 2023, GA4 is going to be your only option. And you're not going to get any of your old data. So even if you have... Um, Google Analytics running on your site now. It's called Universal Analytics. Even if you have that running on your website and you've had it on your website since it came out in 2012, 
all that data is going to be gone starting July of next year. Um, so it's really important that you get it set up now. Um, and what it is, is it's just an iteration of Google Analytics. They've done this four times now. So Google had acquired an analytics company called Urchant back in the day. They took Urchant, rebranded it as Google Analytics. After a while, they rolled out Universal Analytics. Um, and they, they had to do that because Universal Analytics was able to track app numbers in one way and website numbers in another way. And also they started to roll out the features of like, okay, what device are people accessing the internet, like accessing your website through, um, you know, at that time people still had like M dot Anderson.com and Bree Anderson.com. One was made for mobile. One was made for desktop. Um, and people weren't like websites didn't have a ton of functionality back then. The majority of websites didn't. So it was gathering all this data and it was, it was helpful information, but GA4 is now looking at a landscape where people are accessing the internet through their phones more than their computers. And there are tablets that access the internet and their TVs that access the internet and there are more than one way there's more than one way to buy from a company you know companies now have apps um, so are they buying something um, on your desktop and then accessing it through the app or are they buying something in the app and then you know going back to the website to check tracking there, there's just so many ways that people can interact with websites now that they weren't able to when Universal was built out. And not to mention, GA4 had to come at this time because it addresses a lot of privacy issues that we've been seeing over the last you know, five years. Um, so it, it's preparing for a world where users don't have cookies on their, um, their, you know, their browsing devices. So whether that's on their phone, iOS 14.5 with iPhones, you know, users that are, are using Safari to access the internet, some of that data is not trackable to, to business owners anymore, um, which can pose a problem if you've been relying on that data. Um, but what GA4 does is it, it has a lot more like machine learning capabilities. So it's filling in the gaps using a whole bunch of like scientific and statistical information. Um, so it's just addressing a lot more of like our current state of the internet uh, that Universal just wasn't able to. So, so it's a it's a better really version of Google Analytics essentially. But this yeah. is a fascinating part, and I think we I want to like really hammer this home is y'all if you have Google Analytics set up on your page, I do but you have it converted. Now, what's the conversion process? Like, is it, do you have to hire somebody? Do you go press a button? Like, what does it look like to, be, to, to move from just Google Analytics to this new GA4 thing for somebody who already has it, but hasn't moved over it? Because that would be me. So I'm asking, this is kind of a selfish question, but I'm curious, because I, I bet there's other people who, I mean, oh, you just tons. said you're super busy right now with this. So I'm just curious as to what do you have to do to make that happen? Yeah. So if you go to your admin settings in Universal Analytics, so it's on your bottom left, there's like a gear, right? If you click on that, it takes you to your admin settings. And in the middle row, so there's usually three rows that show in the middle row, um, there is something that's just called a GA4 setup assistant, and it will walk you through the process of setting up GA4. Um, but it's really different depending on how you set up Universal. Oh, excuse me, talking too fast. Um, how you set up Universal. So if you used, like if you just had somebody put the JavaScript tag on your website um, that's just for Google Analytics, then it should be able to just set up GA4 for you and you, you're good to go. But if you use something like Google Tag Manager, you're going to have to go in and set up a GA4 specific tag um, and things of that nature. But yeah, there's a GA4 setup assistant built right into Universal Analytics. 
Um, and I know that they're encouraging people. You'll, you're going to start getting a lot more pop-ups when you log into Google Analytics um, saying, hey, soon by July 2023, GA4 is going to be your only option. Please go make sure that you set it up. Um, and most people are able to set up what they need to through that. Um, it's just like certain conversions that you might need help with. Okay. Excellent. Well, it's good to know that the average person can go just do this themselves without having to hire somebody. But I will say this because uh, Brie was saying beforehand that she's been inundated with updates. So if you don't know how to do this yourself, you can get in touch with Brie because she does do this as a service. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So could you like, I'm always looking at this because through my lens and I know I just, I fessed up because I'm not good with numbers, but I'm sure there, I know, in fact, I know there's so many other people who don't pay attention to these things either. Thankfully I have somebody who does pay attention to my numbers, but what could you share like three simple ways to make analytics work for the average business owner or the on, and you know, whether they're a brick and mortar or an online business, most of my community is an online uh, in the online space, but what's like three simple things that they could do to make their analytics work for them. Yeah. So I always say that analytics comes down to two things. You're looking for trends and you're looking for outliers. Those are really the two things that, that you need to be concerned with. Um, and the best way to find those is to use visualizations. So in Google analytics, you're going to see a lot more visualizations in GA4, but you get a lot of visualizations just right there in platform. And what you're looking for is like the things that are happening over and over again. So like, if you see a pattern, you know, that's a trend and those are the things that you can almost always count on. Right. And um, so they're, they're good to know because you can adjust your strategies to, to um, kind of like accommodate those trends. If you see spikes or dips or also known as outliers that happen, you know, once, maybe twice. Um, those are things that are worth looking into more, right? Why did they happen? Um, and do we need to address them? So those are the two things that you, you first kind of start out with. It's like, okay, where are the trends? Where are the outliers? What are they connected to? And then from there, I say every tactic kind of falls into one of three buckets. You have things that you're going to start doing, you're going to stop doing, or you're going to scale. So do more of. Um, and I have a flow chart I can, I can share with you so that you can share it with your community. Um, I have a flow chart that I kind of use to help people decide which bucket a tactic falls into. And I say tactic because strategies are made up of multiple tactics. Um, and you'll see after we go through the flow chart here in a second. But so the first thing that you're going to do is ask yourself, was the return greater than the investment? Am I getting more out of this tactic than I'm putting into it? And it's not just investment. Like it's not just dollar signs, right? It's also your time and um your energy and all that kind of stuff there are so many resources that you can invest into something so are you getting more out of it than you're putting into it so this could be are you getting enough form fills to justify the 10 hours you spent on this specific tactic so let's just call it facebook reels right am i getting enough value back for what i have put into it so if i spend an hour every week creating reels, you know, for an hour, I gen, you know, like, let's just for easy math, let's say for an hour, you charge $100. Um, so you've put in $100 worth of your time into creating reels. If you know that every lead is worth $10, you need to get at least 10 leads off of your reels, right? More or less. Um, and if that's working, cool. If it's not working, you can't keep doing it the exact way you're doing it now. Maybe you need to increase the frequency. Maybe you need to change the topic. Maybe you need to change how you are, um, you know, how you're delivering your content, you know, whatever that is. Um, but 
you can't keep doing it the same way. It's not a good business decision. If it is working and you are getting more return than, you know, you invested, the next question is, did I mean for this to happen? Was there an actual strategy behind this or did it just kind of, was it a happy accident? Because sometimes we have happy accidents and that's great. Um, so you meant to do it. That's great. So if you're like, I'm going to focus on Facebook reels, I really think that it can bring me in qualified leads. And it did. And you had a strategy. Great. Let's do more of that. How can we get even more out of this strategy, whether that's offering something specific to that audience or doing more reels or, you know, partnering with other people to do reels, whatever that is, try and expand that as much as you can. If you didn't have a strategy behind it, because it was a happy accident, then we're going to start doing that. Like, okay, so I was putting, you know, like an hour aside to do reels. Um, For some reason, I have two of the reels that I talked about Google Analytics for, as opposed to just analytics as, uh, you know, in general. Um, those two reels did really, really well. So how, like, how can I have a strategy behind that? Well, okay, I'm going to post mostly about GA4, or I'm going to try and incorporate GA4 to my strategy. You know, um, a, a lot of times I see this with like influencers, um, people seeing that like specific blogs are sending really qualified traffic to their website. They had no idea. Um, so, you know, my advice would be like, okay, create a strategy for how can you work with that blog or that influencer to get even more out of, you know, their audience. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of like the first two things is like visualize your data so that you can spot trends and outliers and then go through the stop, start, scale flow chart of did it, like, am I getting more out of it than I put into it? And then did I have the strategy behind it? And then the last thing is to remember that everything's part of a bigger picture and you should always be looking at like your multi-touch channels um, and attribution. So like, for instance, a lot of people sell social media services, um, but social's like a part of a bigger picture, right? Like when you're doing social media, people are going to come and like, like get to know you through social media, but then, um, they're probably going to come to your website multiple times before actually making a purchase or filling out the form or whatever that is. So you need to be looking at the multi-touch um, like channels so that you can see how you're actually like, what are all the touch points before somebody makes a conversion? Um, because, you know, I've had clients where we looked at it and they said YouTube was to like, hundred dollars or nine hundred dollars worth of conversions and we're like well we definitely put a lot more than nine hundred dollars worth of effort into this but then we look at the multi-touch channels and it actually touched over ten thousand dollars worth of conversions and that makes a lot more sense right um so those would be the the three big things that that i encourage people to do Awesome. And I think, you know, some of that will be fairly easy for people um, to do. It's just a matter of, you know, setting down and, you know, uh, doing it. We had a great question here and I just want to pull it up real quick. It's like, does it make sense? It's this going back to the GA4. Does it make sense to convert now so that the new history begins now uh, versus losing all pre-conversion data later on? Such a great question. Yeah. So um, I'm encouraging people like, make it the top of your priority list um, to get GA4 done this month because when it rolls out in July of next year, you'll have, you know, year over year data. Um, you can run GA4 and Universal at the same time. So if you're still more comfortable with the Universal Analytics, by all means, keep using it, but make sure that you have GA4 data being collected because um, you're going to want that. Uh, and that year over year data is so important, especially for people that have seasonal businesses. Um, and it's always nice to have more data than you think you need, um, because once you need it, you really need it and you're going to want it. And it's not there. There's no going back retrospectively and getting it. So I would say definitely try and get it set up this month 
and um and uh go ahead and have both universal and ga4 running at the same time um because it's not going to hurt anything to have them both running Good, good. It's such a great question too, because, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we drag our feet on stuff and, and then you're like, crap, it's like next year and you're like, oh, I haven't done this. Ah. Um, yeah. So I loved what you said about the year over year data, because essentially by the time this actually kicks in and all the old data is gone, you'll have had a year of, of data essentially for under the new system. So go do the the setup, y'all. Go do the G4, uh, GA4 um, setup. There you go. I keep wanting to call it the G4. It's just, that's a sexier, like G4, that just sounds yeah. good, right? <laughs> Versus GA4, like they need to do away with that A, I think. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little, I want to talk a little bit about something that's like kind of a bit of a pet peeve for me. Um. But I've, I see so many people, especially in the early days of social media, um, where, oh, let's just buy some social followers. Like, uh, I need some, I need us. I, I want when people go to my Instagram. I want 100,000 followers there because that signals that I'm an influencer or I have authority or, you know, whatever the, the buzz phrase is. So can you explain vanity metrics, which is what I basically call them, and and why they don't matter. Yeah, so you know, in our space, we've been talking about vanity metrics for a long time. I, I said when I was getting started, you know, on Facebook, it was so easy to grow pages. Like it was so stupid easy um, to get a whole bunch of followers and, and all of that stuff. But like you're saying, a lot of those followers, maybe they're passive followers, they're just kind of there just cause. Um, maybe they were bought, whatever that, that situation is. But I, I would argue that almost any metric can be a vanity metric. And, you know, I have a presentation that I'm, I'm presenting in all these places right now. Um, and in that presentation, I say every metric is a vanity metric if measured alone. Because you might say, I want form fills. Great. We got 100 form fills. Are they qualified? Um, if not, then that's, you know, that form fill metric could be a, a vanity metric. Um, I want more purchases. Great. Are they repeat customers? Are they returning their product? Are they just buying the course and never going through it? You know, it, there, there are so many different things that go into actually getting what you need, um, out of, a campaign or a strategy or even just a specific tactic. So I would say almost any metric could be a vanity metric. Um, but you know, I, it, it all just goes back to keeping the end in mind and then also having an understanding of key performance indicators. There's an S on the end of that for a reason. I alluded to this earlier where it's like you have your big, your big goal, right? So the goal is to get qualified leads from, you know, people filling out this form. All right. What are all of the things that impact that? Those are all key performance indicators. And if you're tracking all of those, you'll be able to make decisions as to like, which part of the journey do you need to make changes on? So if the, if that was the main goal is to say like, okay, we want um, people qualified people to fill out this form. And in order to do that, they have to start filling out the form. They have to um, see the form. They have to get to the page of the form. Maybe they get there through this page of the website and they got to that page of the website through seeing the Facebook post that they had to click on, you know, okay, which of these pieces are really working? Maybe we're getting a lot of clicks to the website, but the people aren't going from that page to the form page. We know that we need to make the change here. Um, but if I measured any of those things alone, if I just said, I need people to click from my Facebook page to my website, that could be a vanity metric because all those people could go to the website and then just drop off. Right. So good. So good. Such a great explanation too, because you're exactly right. I mean, and, and numbers are, um, 
what I would call subjective too in the context. Like if you think, you know, a hundred people filled out your form and you're like, woohoo, that's amazing. I've got, I've got a hundred people filled out my form, but two of them were qualified, which means that it's, you know, something else is broke. Um, you know, yeah. maybe it's the, you know, if you're using some sort of a VSL or, you know, an educational video, maybe your message is attracting a bunch of folks, but it's not qualifying them for your offer. So it's, that's a re really great point and something I'd never considered in the context of the actual outcome, because I'm always looking at it through, oh, everybody wants, you know, all these followers or all these fans. And then that doesn't really always turn into to revenue. Right. So such a much a, such a great explanation. Thanks for really digging into that. Um, so best practices when it comes to analytics, what would you suggest for people like, you know, if they're not super savvy, like what are some of the things that they should do even if they can't do all the things? Well, I, I, um, I encourage people to be messy, right? Just feel free to get into the platforms and find all of this information that you're never going to use. Maybe you don't even understand it right away, but the more that you do it, the more you're going to get comfortable. So dedicate, you know, 10 minutes a day to just going through some numbers and going, I don't know what that means, but it looks interesting or, okay, I I'm starting to get it now. Um, this might mean something. Let me dig in a little bit more. And then you can find out like, Oh yeah, that did mean something or, Oh no, that's actually kind of normal, whatever that might be. Um, so feel free to be messy with it. Um, and also, you know, specifically GA four Facebook's gotten a little bit better at it, but, um, for there's navigation so if you go to the reporting section of ga4 um they have what they call the life cycle on the left hand side um that's the main navigation and it, it's um acquisition engagement um monetization and retention and that's our classic uh marketing funnel well it's actually more of like the flywheel because it has that retention section in there um and if you really think about that, that kind of gives you a, a good understanding of like, okay, if I need to research how people are getting into the top of the funnel, I just start at the very first section. If I need to figure out how people are interacting at the bottom of the funnel, I just go to the very last section, right? Um, and each of those sections have different reports and things under them. Um, but maybe think of it that way and, and start that way. Um and Facebook does this too in a sense of their metrics, generally speaking, go from user top of funnel metrics to uh, conversion and event metrics all the way to the right. So, um, you know, getting familiar with those things, but just really being comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, you know, I still find new things and analytics platforms all the time because they're always changing. That's the nature of this industry. Uh, so just, just really get your hands in there, get dirty, but then also remember that have, have that understanding of how the navigation works of, Oh, okay. So if I, if I look at this first report, I'm going to get top of funnel. If I look at the second report, mid funnel, last report, bottom of funnel, um, that that can be really helpful. And then once you're you're somewhat comfortable, then you can go in and look for the answer to one question. Okay, how did people get to this specific page? Go find it. Challenge yourself to go find it. Um, and I think you'll be surprised how how much you can, how quickly you can get to that point. And I'm a big fan of doing it messy. I'm just uh, I, um, like, just get in there and do it and then refine it, iterate it. You learn. I, I mean, even, you know, like I, I just tell people this when my mom was alive and tech first started to come, you know, be a big thing, social, you know, the phones got more evolved, all the stuff, you know, and, and so she would, she used to call me and I'd be like, Oh, what question is she going to have now? Now I would love to have her call me. But back then yeah. um, it was like, Oh dear. You know, I'm going to be spending the next hour and a half trying to talk her through something. Right. She was so afraid she would break something. I'm like, mom, you're not going to break it. Just, just play with it. it it'll be okay. <laughs> you know, Just figure it out because yeah. you learn by playing. Um, but again, so often we think we're going to just break something. It's going to be irreparable. So, uh, but yeah, just, just go in there and do it messy. I like that. 
So, um, um, can you give some examples and feel free, like they could be, you know, client examples if you feel led to share them or just examples of things that from others that you know worked of where people that were paying attention to their numbers was able to, to really, um, you know, do amazing things because they knew what was working and wasn't, what wasn't like, you know, basically gr growth examples like, Hey, this, yeah. because they knew this, they were able to do this. Yeah. So I, I've kind of touched on a few of them. Um, the first one that, that always kind of blows people's mind is, is that, um, that YouTube example of where, you know, we kind of needed to assess whether or not YouTube was, was actually working because you're spending a lot of money. I mean, YouTube for the most part, you got to put a lot of effort into it. So if, when we looked at the YouTube numbers, um, so there are different kinds of like attribution models, right? So what was the last thing that they touched that made them make the decision is kind of people's idea. And it's like, well, they probably had multiple touch points, you know, back when I was in college, all the marketing books said it takes seven touch points to before somebody makes a decision. And if that's the case, then we can't just rely on like the last touch, right? Because, you know, who knows that they have, maybe they needed to see those other things in order to make their decision. Um, but yeah. And that they said like $900, which like we with 20, there were 22 um, videos on the channel at the time. They definitely put more than $900 of an investment into that. Um, but then we looked at those multi-channel funnels and saw that it actually had, um, touched over 10,000 it was like $10,600 worth of uh of purchases and what we found was people are tuning into the YouTube videos because they have specific questions about something and this this client had a high ticket um product so people asked questions they found the YouTube videos and then they would visit the website um and then they would come back a couple of times before making the purchase. The purchase was like over a thousand dollars. Um, and so that made sense. Right. So, but we realized, okay, we got to keep doing the YouTube videos. If we had stopped doing the videos, there was a very good chance that we would lose money, um, because we weren't being found. Right. Um, another example is, you know, the reason you need to know your numbers, this is always a fun one. I took over um, an ads account one time and was looking at, which I don't do anymore, but at that time I was, I was looking at, so in Google ads, you bid on keywords, right? And the keywords are different from the queries that you show up for. So like I could bid on, in this case, I was bidding, they were bidding on their brand name. It just so happened that their brand name shared the brand name of a, a they sold like a, um they sold like something very specific uh and tactical uh in like the tactical space right they were sharing a, a brand name with a plumbing um product as well as like an action figure or like superhero thing and they had spent well over, I want to say 25% of their entire ads budget on terms that were not related or on queries that were not related to their brand. They had their brand name in them, but people were looking for, it was, it, it would say the brand name and then it would say plumbing or it would say the brand name and then it would say like the, a comic book, this action figure or, or superhero was in. Um, and they would have never known because they didn't, well, they didn't know because they weren't taking the extra step of digging into, okay, where is this money being spent? Um, some of that has to do with people just don't know. And some of it has to do with people going, okay, well, our numbers are good enough. We're making $2 on every dollar we spend. So that's good enough. Um, when in reality, okay, you're making $2 on every dollar you spend, but 25% of your budget is going somewhere else. So you could be making 
you know, 250 or three dollars on every dollar you spend, right? Um, so that's why it's important to look at your numbers. Same thing with, you know, I had another client that um I give that that example of like influencers with. They had no idea that this one blog had written um like a how to guide and included their product and um like 20% of all paying company it, it was a SaaS company 20% of all paid customers had been on that blog at some point and they had no idea so it's like now we are going to go out and we're going to work with that you know that specific blogger but also bloggers that those people interact with as well because they obviously have a lot of trust in them um and you know that turns around and, and becomes a three or four X strategy, which for some people can be life changing. So good. Yeah. Tell you the numbers are important. Um, you know, just even when you're looking at it through the, the, the pieces and parts of what's actually working, you know, mm -hmm. if you're, if you're spending money in particular, it's super powerful to know if you're not spending money, what, what's actually all this, you're throwing all this stuff at the wall. So like, why wouldn't it make sense to understand what does work so that you can do more of that instead of trying to do all the things, which is, I think where we find ourselves sometimes, you know, we're like, Oh, let me do reels. Let me do, you know, YouTube, let me do all the things. When is that something that really is going to drive ROI for you? So I just feel like I've learned so much, uh, Bree. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, we're going to pick the winners real quick for uh, the giveaway and tell everybody how they can connect with you. Like, where do you want them to, like, I know your website, but wherever you would like people to say, hey, I need to know more about Bree. Where do I connect? Yeah, so um, you can just Google Bree E. Anderson and all of my stuff pops up. Uh, I will say I hang out on Twitter the most. Um, I have long form how to videos on and strategy videos on my YouTube channel. Um, and then short, like super quick tactical things on my TikTok. Um, a lot of people seem to like the TikTok content probably because it's just the most engaging and, and quickest. Um, but those are the three places that I hang out the most. But like I said, if you just Google Brie, like the cheese, E. Anderson, you'll find all of my stuff and I would love to connect with all of you. All right. Excellent. We'll drop that a link so you don't have to try to remember it into the comment area, you guys, so that you can just go. And of course, if you ask for show notes, we'll make sure that um, all of her details are in the show notes as well. Um, but congrats to Martin and Laura for winning PDF to profit. If you'll just go over to kimgross.com forward slash winner um, and give us all your details and we will set you up ASAP. Um, and then Paul says, um, everything Bree said was an aha moment, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I think that's the fascinating part for people that don't really know, don't have a structure yet for their numbers, don't necessarily know what, like, how do I do this? Um, because numbers are not my thing either. So I totally understand. Um, thankfully, somebody else takes looks after the numbers. I don't have to. <laughs> But Bree, thank you so much for sharing your genius with us. And uh, all of you guys that are with us live or watching on the replay or even listening at some future point, um, just want to say thanks for being with us. I know time is valuable. And, you know, when you spend some with us, we appreciate it so much. So take care of yourselves. Stay safe. See you next week. Same time, same place. Um, and I don't remember our guest off the top of my head, but it'll be somebody amazing. I promise. Um, just as amazing as Bree has been for us today. So you guys take care of yourselves again. Like I say, stay safe and we'll see you next week.